Tonight we visit Thurman Staden and Skitch Manion, and they're going to have a conversation about their their meeting and their experiences together. And at the end, the audience will have a chance to ask questions. Just briefly, I wanted to mention membership, donations, and shopping at Wheaton Arts. That is the ideal way to support these free and educational programs of Wheaton Arts. So if you have a chance, check out the membership and donation opportunities, and you can always browse our shop for great gifts for yourself and people you care about. So it's my pleasure to introduce Pamela Wakeman, my co-worker, the Director of Education and Artist Services at Wheaton Arts. This evening, she will moderate the questions you ask in the Q&A window. So over to you now, Pam. Thank you, Marcy, for that wonderful introduction. Hi, everybody. It's my pleasure to be here with you tonight. This evening, we are joined by Skitch Mannion and Thurman Statham. Our first guest is Skitch Mannion. Skitch began glass blowing when he was 10 years old and has been devoted to the material ever since. He believes glass blowing requires a specific lifestyle centered around a dedication to the art. He has always sought perfection in craftsmanship and glass blowing. In 2014, he established Working Man Handmade, a glass and design company based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Each contemporary hand-blown glass object is created using traditional Italian glass making techniques while being inspired by modern aesthetics. Skitch is currently the studio manager at Wheaton Arts. Our next guest is Thurman Statham. Thurman is a sculptor, glass artist, and painter, most notably known as a pioneer of the contemporary glass movement for his life-size glass ladders, chairs, tables, constructed box-like paintings, and small-scale houses, all created through the technique of gluing glass plates together. Sandblasted surfaces become a canvas for spontaneous, vibrant colors and line work, which take nuances from abstract expressionism and minimalism concepts, while simultaneously incorporating a twist by using blown glass elements and found objects. The latter half of Statham's career has focused on the importance of educational programming within the arts. He has taken a deep interest in employing workshops to promote social change and positively impacting a community. Thank you both so much for being here with us tonight. I'm very excited for this conversation. So Thurman, man, it's been such a long time since I've really seen you. I feel like it's been forever. I mean, it's been a couple of years, I assume. Um, I don't know how you're doing, but I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I miss working with you and I, I, I look forward to seeing you again and, and, and working together again. I know we talked about some ideas on how to work together, but uh, I assume, you know, you, you got some ideas of your own that you want to work on. So how are you, how, how are you doing, man? I'm really glad to, to be here. Really glad to see you. Um, yeah, it's been about eight years since we you know, had that blowing session. I and, know. You know, and um, it's a kind of an exciting time. You know, I, you know, we're kind of pulling out of the cold bed and I don't know what, I don't know, are you, are you going to be lighting up the furnaces anytime soon? And Yeah, I think uh, we're drying out the new one I built now. I, I've done a lot of maintenance and stuff over the, the COVID time and kind of gotten things organized and a lot of maintenance done. But yeah, I'm, we're, we're like, we're going to light up. We're going to open to the public on a modified schedule in April. I'm excited to have the, the public in here and, 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 and work with uh, the public on education and, and different ways to get in touch with the material. But it's funny, I was thinking the other day because I've been in and out of so many buildings and I saw some stuff that we made together and I, uh, it made me think of you before we were gonna have this conversation because it was such a fun time working with you. And in this picture right here, I don't know if you remember, this is like pretty much the first time we met at you know in in the studio and you had done some drawings and we were kind of going over it and i was really uh excited for the idea of working with somebody who knew what they wanted and i know that you had some preconceived ideas but we kind of went with it on the fly and uh it was it was pretty awesome do you do you, do you remember this uh this moment here i think i was terrified you know <laughs> 
<laughs> I think I was terrified because, you know, generally, you know, I, you know, I had, when I, I think when I met you, I was kind of tired of my, my glass blown objects, you know, and I, I make, I've made parts for, that were components and larger and, and as parts, but I, at this point, you know, prior to coming, I had, I had made a decision that I wanted, I mean, I love glass. I, I love, I'm the kind of guy that you can put in a furnace room and just blowing bubbles. I'm happy. I love the actual act of doing it. And I, I strongly believe that, um, you know, that, that working creatively in the shop, I wanted to create, I, I wanted to, enter, the one thing I wanted to do was interject the way of working that I could actually be creative with the material instead of just gaffing, like we'd actually be drawing in the act of doing. So we, you know, so the, the sketching, you know, what's his name? Hank Adams had made heads before. And I thought, well, you know, he doesn't own heads, you know, uh -huh. and, and there's, so, there's so many venues within that framework to build. So I pretty much made this commitment, but I had no idea what we could make, except that, you know, I'm, you know, being, being my craft history, you know, and as a craftsman, you know, I, I think the process of doing for is just as sometimes and maybe even more important to me than 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 the actual objects you know and so so at the time i, I was like not really clear and you know you had set this stage i you know i had said that i wanted to make things relatively large so all of a sudden there's this you know which is what we does it creates these creative opportunities for individuals you know, artists. So all of a sudden I had this stage set with all this sort of physical effort because it does take a team. And, you know, the outcomes, you know, were, were really, you know, unknown. So, you know, I think, I think at times, you know, personally, I think sometimes the things get too projected prior to the act of doing. It. And you know, even in my own life, that's true. And even in some of the educational programming, you know, knowing the outcomes kind of throws the journey off and, and its productivity, you know, but I, but I do remember um, this time. And I, I think, I think um, probably the next slide might indicate um, more of what we were doing. Yeah, that's when we were blowing and, you know, you know, blowing at Wheaton is such a, such a, um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, you know, they have this big stage behind you and, and um, it's, it's, um, you know, I'm kind of a ham, you know, when it comes to blowing, I just like, like the doing and you can see we, we have the big glory hall and I think that kid, we was, was part of a, a group of kids because so many kids go through there for these tours and, 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 you know, and while I was blowing, I think we were trying to, I was sort of incubating ideas for kind of enriching. How do you make a core fantastic? You know, how do you how do you make the act of watching this blow? But how do you how do you bring the audience into them? So I think we brought him down out of the audience and put him to work. I, I think. Yeah. What happened was we were working, and I remember this moment like it was yesterday. We were working, and there was a group of like teenagers behind us, and they were sitting really close to the rail. And you were like, looking, and you were like, I think this one guy over here, I think he's falling asleep. And I was like, really? And you were like, yeah. So we turned around and he was like, he wasn't really falling asleep. He was kind of just like looking around and you were like, hey buddy, like what's going on? You were like, put the phone down and come here. So he, you pulled that kid out from the, this, the audience and had him run the doors for the first time. And I remember I was, I told somebody to get some safety glasses for him, but this is his first time ever, not only being in a glass blowing studio, but he's like standing right there next to somebody who he's never met before, part of the team. In this picture, it looks like he's almost like part of the team, like he's been there forever. You know, and he, he thought we were trying to kill him for a minute, you know, with the heat. But, uh, you know, I remember going to Williamsburg as a teen, uh, Virginia as a teenager and seeing this glass blowing and wondering, what is that? You know, and, you know, you know, being in, in you know, it, 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 it's just such a, a powerful material, you know, in the immediacy of working with it, I, I, I really, really, really value, you know, really value that. 
you know, and, you know, I, I think in many ways, it's kind of an art form in itself in terms of, 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 of drawing, right? You know, I think too often things are predetermined before people dwell. So, so really, even, even, even on the beginning of the blows, you know, I, I was in, you know, I think there's another image you can keep going. And I, I think, you know, it was really kind of difficult. Um, you know, I, I didn't know quite where, where, where it would all, you know, where it would all end, you know. I remember when we were working in the beginning, there was a, like, there was a, there was not a, a block, but there was kind of like us trying to understand like what your expectation was, what I thought it was, you know, figuring out how to do it. And I remember we spent several days. I know, I think we worked for 12 days or 11 days together straight. And I remember in the beginning, we were working really small, trying to get the expressions to kind of feel more natural and not like a, a blockaded drawing. It was more of like trying to create character and, 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 uh, emotion in the pieces as we were working so we kind of worked through that before we scaled up but we remember we spent a lot of time making the really small ones they were like 10 12 inches and we were kind of working up to the bigger ones like you see here in this photo yeah i do i do remember that and you know i you know i it just sort of changed my whole bad vocabulary and way of, of, of being in the shop and so it, it was it's just as spontaneous as the act of drawing is kind of like where where I was at. It's, you know, you know, having this thing is huge. I mean, I I, I you know, the staff was so strong. I, I remember not losing losing a sense of scale. And I, I commend you for for not saying like talk about make this make it make it make it smaller, you know? And um, you know, I, I think, you know, I really, you know, my what was most important about, I mean, this was probably that that particular 10 days was one of the more powerful blowing sessions I've ever had. And and really my if I had any real sick goal, it was to kind of reinvent yourself, you know, just reinvent how you do what you do and 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 you know, being being, you know, everything about glass, even when you melt it how you do the blow you're making aesthetic decisions and so so you know what we're going through regardless of how technical it is it's it's kind of like a form of three-dimensional sculpting and you know I, I i had planned to paint these things and look at them as paintings and canvases you know and no but this thing was this particular vessel you know and you know are they are the figures inspired by anything vessel any, any particular person, you know, yeah, you know, but that, that, that all very much changes, you know, as, as you work, you know, so, I mean, I, you know, I employed working in sheet glass as an alternative to not having, a, uh, you know, a glass furnace, and so, so this was a great thing, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, I kind of have a love for Wheaton from the point of view that they've helped so many artists, you know, and so many kids. And, you know, it was, it's one of those facilities that, that, that is very, very, it's built around public access and, and, and kind of a bridge between creativity, you know, and how, how it, and how it can very seamlessly generate into the general public. But, um, you know, I think as we kept blowing, I mean, the next, you can move forward in the, in the images, if you can. And there's the, the, the PC, it's big, it's, it's tall, it's tall as you, half of you, you know? My yeah. God. I mean, I, I remember this one. I, when I learned to blow, I remember um, James Carpenter coming from Italy, and I was a student at Rhode Island School of Design, and he brought this steel table, the marvel, right? And I remember him bringing these color rods and seeing them for the first time and just learning, you know, how to, how to roll up, how to roll the darn thing <laughs> on the table. And I was just so, you know, just, you know, all of a sudden you could blow larger. And, you know, I, I kind of quit. I started working in play class and going to school in New York and doing this conceptual stuff and, and working with minimalism and all this sort of stuff. And, 
so my my skill set as you know when the italians came over which drove me nuts all these other techniques came in so my skill set kind of dropped off you know while others right. continued and it was kind of really interesting because I think when Lino first came, I just went nuts. I went strangle the guy because everyone was talking about how, how, how you make things, how to do things. I mean, even at other schools like Bill Chuck and even Penland, it was very kind of technically based. And 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 I don't know. And people make kind of ugly stuff, you know. <laughs> and then then all of a sudden. I can't figure it out, but all this skill set just kind of got processed and and things like this could be made. You know, whereas before when I was learning in 72 and learning how to blow in 71 and three and four, I don't think none of this was even at least possible. In this so, you know, um, there is the vase and I think there's an image of the vase this vessel, um, I believe we have one that's where it's where I've recontextualized it into an installation or painting, you know. And you know, I you know, there's there's a hidden kind of a symbolism, you know, within within the vessel itself, you know. You know yeah, know. and the thing about this is too is like when we were having this dialogue and and working together to make these pieces. Like for me personally, I had no idea what you were going to do as far as painting them or you know, decorating them so that they had more character and attitude. But the thing is, when we're making it, you know, we're as we were working, we were trying to get to that point where we would say, okay, well, I'm gonna do this or we're gonna do this. And this shape here is <laughs> one of many that we made pretty large, but I remember trying to vary the expressions. And then when I saw you paint them and, uh, create emotion it like it changed everything like I remember seeing it and I was like whoa like this thing you know has a totally different personality now like in this picture here it's hard to tell but I remember it has like uh not like a it has like a very monotone look on its face but the idea of when you painted it it totally changed it and people will see that when uh you move to the next slide that has the um the installation going in it because when we started installing them it was so crazy for me to know, like the pieces transformed so much. It's so hard for me to explain, but you know, the piece is clear right now. And when you make a piece of glass that's sculpted there, and I'm sure you know that when it's clear, it, it almost looks like nothing. And then when you add the colors, even if it's black glass, red glass, white glass, if it's not clear, there's so much more emotion. And these pieces here, when I'm making them, it's like, there's an emotion happening as we're making it. And it really kind of excited me to to create this emotion between the two of us. That, that's that's I mean, to make just to get through it was amazing. And I forget what was the the woman on the right. What was her name? She was she was amazing. Um, in, in the image. She I can't remember off the top of my head. I forget totally. I don't remember. There's so many people. I know that behind us was a gentleman named David. I think that this was happening, I can't remember when this was happening. I feel like this was happening on a weekend when we had another crew come in. Cause I know that we were making them for several days straight and we had some different help. The last slide that we had, we were making that head during the event that we had. Uh, it was like the emanation opening or the emanation demonstration. Cause I remember behind us, there was somebody helping us during that time. So I forget who that is on the right, but uh, I don't know that that's David behind us. That's um, Amy Rubenstein, guys. Okay. Thank you. I mean, it's been a while. Yeah. You know, I mean, when, you know, I'm so much in the present that I'm kind of like, even when I work in hot class, I, I, I'm just like, what, you know, what I have at that moment is what it is. And I, you know, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I, I, I kind of thought we were making these canvases. Um, right. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, I, you go a lot of times, what, is, what should your skill set be? And, you know, you know I, I go, how, you know, even though people's skill set is so much more than it was in the 70s with, the, you know, with the, with the influence of the Italian and the Swedish, and the German techniques, 
you know, I, I remember, you know, in the end, you know, I, I just remember and you know, early on when when Dale and James Carpenter, Dale's really Dave Carpenter worked together and being to work with them as a student, you know, their their skill set at the time, everyone's skill set, you know, was maybe your junior's cop. It was not that great. And at the same time, they were pretty darn, <laughs> pretty darn innovative at their, their, you know, and, and the things they did with the skills that they had, you know, was just, 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 just amazing. You know, um, I think there's the, the I think there's a, an image of this when it, when it was completed, Pam, you know, I, I'm not sure there, there's the, there's a vessel, you know, and it, it, it was sandblasted and, it kind of became this this canvas kind of object that that's actually at the uh, it's at the Kaneko Foundation and an installation. It's part of an installation, you know. And, and you know, and discovery is such a huge part, you know, of of the of the of the blowing. It's true. Well, I that's guess. what I was. That's what I was going to say. Is you know, before you came here, we had this conversation when we were working. But you had you had never really endeavored down this road before with making stuff like this because I remember us talking about the idea of the face jug and some you know face like so how to incorporate the faces and make them the way you wanted and for you having so much experience and me working with you for the first time I was nervous in the beginning but then I got really comfortable but you had never really done anything like this before right like this this style or this scale that's correct I mean I'm I'm a what do you call it uh, when you copy things? I think it's a plagiarist. I think it's, it's a plagiarism. plagiarism. Well, you know, in, in North Carolina, I, I do work at Star, at the Star Works in North Carolina. And um, there's a tradition down there of making face jobs. And it comes from an African tradition. Uh, and these things get buried. And were you buried at one point, people and stuff like that. And, you know, there is, not that this is about it, but I'm very, very interested in ceremony and, and a lot of work and, and even the um, activism that I'm involved in. So, you know, there was a certain amount of like, you know, what, you know, how do, how do we reinvent heads? You know, you've got the Roman heads and then I have a great friend, Drew Kaneko, who lives here in Omaha, who makes these big ceramic heads and, I've got Hank that makes heads and you know, <laughs> not like, you know, and, and it, it's always amazed me how, uh, you know, I mean, clay is a pretty responsive material, but clay glass is just, just is, is, is crazy. And then I think at the time, you know, when I was working, I complete that Wheaton, I, you know, uh, at the time, um, Hank, I think Hank Adams was managing it and, um, you know, I really didn't understand. I didn't read my mail very well. And I didn't realize it was a show. I don't know if you know this, but we were blowing. I didn't realize we were having th this, this show that you all sponsor called Emanations. And um, I think the next image is of that installation, I believe. And I, re I remember that because we're working, we were working in the, in the studio. And you were like, I remember this. I, I, our time together, I remember very specifically because it was a very different dynamic than I've had with most. And I remember us talking and you were like, oh, I'm gonna go back to Omaha and I'll be back in a couple of weeks when they're all out and we'll take a look at them. And I was like, no, Thurman, like this needs, we're gonna get this thing done in like a couple of days because the show's opening up. And, and you were like, oh, wow. Like, and then it kind of got this ball rolling in a different direction. And in this picture here, it's, uh, it's part of the installation. And I remember when we were in the space together installing the work, you were, you, you know, we built this plant for you and, and the wall and everything had to get outfitted. But the funniest thing for me, it's not really funny. It's more of like a, a, a way to show people how glass is utilized in a different fashion. So these don't even look like they're made of glass when you get done because of how you paint it and the texture and everything. It's talking about ceremony. I think it looked like glass. <laughs> All right, well, keep going, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. I was just thinking, when you mentioned, you know, ceremony and how that influenced you, it's, 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 it's almost like these take on a form of like a relic or like an older 
object that you might have found and you've given it a new life by creating uh, a look that's different. Like these pieces to me, the thing that blew me away the most, and I keep saying this is they look so much different when we're done than when we're making it. Well, it says, and Applebaum says they look like last her. She, so I, I mean, I'm, I'm just giving you a hard time, Stitch. It's I know. Great. Hey, I think it's great. You know, I'm I, just saying, you know, for me personally, they, I remember them looking so shiny and, and, and different. And then when they're done, they have this matte because of the sandblasting, they have this matte look. And it, it, it made me feel like they were like so much different. Like they had been uh, around the block, so to speak. You know, they all, these, and the emanations, all the pieces, I think we had a few days. So I sandblasted them and painted them. And then we, they came back to the studio and uh, here, and then I sandblasted them and repainted them again, um, just to see. And they, it was amazing how close, close the vessels came. You can show the whole installation, I think is the next image. I, I'm not sure. Um, pretty sure that's just these are just some of the of, of the ones this one was actually um painted this image was done two days ago right and, and what had happened is uh the piece was in the Kaneko foundation and it was in an educational space on a table and there was a whole bunch of markers and stuff on them and the, <laughs> kid, the kids thought that meant you could draw on the head you know and so the people they do all over the thing, you know, and and um, um, and and then I um, got it back, and I had to blast it and repaint it. <laughs> I, I, no, I restained it, you know, and it, it gets sealed. You can I continue. There's a few other images of the individual ones that were done. That's the emanations and um, installation at the time, and you know um the scale of the objects are aren't it's actually in progress because i can see a piece of newspaper right yeah. on the right side of it you know and and um that was a i mean that show was amazing effort you know i mean i mean considering wheaton's wheaton's history as a as a glass one factory and 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 then all these different artists from all over the country and, and some international having this show was it's a great venue, and um, you know, I, um, I it would have been I, I would have been I would have been happier if I had read my mail and realized that you know I made a pro, <laughs> you know. But you know, it's funny how how these 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 types of projects work because you know you you um, you know, sometimes the lack of time and resources become kind of a, a guide a guideline for you know, for a different venue of, of creative thought and, and the mythology of working, you know, you know, it's always been kind of, you know, th this stuff is, I mean, the actual blowing and making of the work, um, I, you know, I don't have fun. It's right. The furnace, getting it, getting it, just even getting this darn thing in the oven was, you know, you make it, it's hot. If you goof around and look at it, it breaks. It'd be right. nice oven then you gotta like move it and you gotta you know all this stuff it's i mean i i um I, you know I'm, i sort of don't allow myself to like what i do on the surface and and if i've always wanted you know as much as i enjoy things i don't necessarily think my feelings about making an object um i don't think they it necessarily dictate the quality of the object. I've, I've had some real kind of adverse working situations that were incredibly productive, you know. And I'm not saying this was an adverse working situation, but it's these things are. I mean, I can't just make them anywhere, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. And and then you know, and just you know, the the language, you know, each blower when they touch the glass, regardless of if they're gaffing or blowing for somebody else, they they leave a mark. They leave a very imperceptible mark on all of it. And and it's kind of hard to to grasp it. You know, it's not even necessarily a, a linear mark as much as it's a style, it's a it's a way things move. 
So I mean, in many ways, you you know, it's this. These are, you know, these are kind of these are collaborative works, um, and and in so many ways, and it's even more so when there's five people helping you. you right. Know? And that was the hardest part. Is you know, we're we're working together to do this, and I remember we had like a revolving crew of people because we had people during the week and then people on the weekends. And I remember telling you like, oh, you know, we should do this now because we have this crew of people and then we have, you know, another group of people that are bigger so we can make bigger stuff. But the one thing that's crazy and, and a lot of people, you know, that come through Emanation are not, a, you know, not aware, but you get so much out of it. Like, well, you got this installation, but remember how many more pieces you had? You had the smaller ones and the medium ones. I mean, we, we must have made like. 20, 30 pieces that you were wound up painting and working with. And this is just what we used for the installation, but there were, I still have some here, but we have so many pieces that we went through to figure out what fit well. I remember taking pieces down, putting pieces up. The one that's laying on its side in there, the, the teal one, I remember getting that up there and we took it up there and we were looking at it and we were like, hey, you know, we should get another one. We took it down and put another one up there. It was pretty awesome to like, have the ability to cycle through all these different pieces. Yep, yep. Actually, Darren, yes. Yep. Darren, I have a question. Before we move on from the topic of painting and combining the techniques of painting and glass blowing, I just want to ask the question, were there challenges? I know you're, you're trained in painting, um, but were there challenges in combining those two methods? And what did you learn along the way as you were exploring that combination? So, you know, I think painting on glass has is, is almost become instinctual in many ways. You know, I, I can honestly say that that um, the first the first vessels, I mean, I think any object you wonder what's its inherent aesthetic value, you know, just because you make things. And, you know, you're talking to a guy that throws out work a lot. I mean, I make things and I'm like, I think the first um, I shouldn't say this out loud, but I remember the first one of the, you know, and so, so I, I you know, I think that, um, you know, I'd never just painted a vessel, you know, I've always been able to paint on larger, larger plates. So just working on a three dimensional object that, you know, like in this, in this installation here, you can see that I've incorporated the, they, they, they're actually parts of a larger work and and making a smaller work within itself that could set and move and was 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 probably one of the biggest biggest uh, challenges is just sort of thinking of them as a single sort of crafted object you know as opposed to like a part of a larger kind of format and so one I think one was format the other is um, these were, um, you know, you know, some of the clear and some, I think we did a few that had color sources, you know, the, you know, color, color in glasses is, is, is kind of a, it's almost like a, a form of alchemy, you know, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you paint on glass, I mean, everything you do changes it, even the slightest thing. So, if, a, if, if the color is put into the glass be, while you're blowing hot, it's, it's a molecular bond and it reacts to light. You know, it will actually have the ability to radiate that color onto another object surface. Whereas when you paint on it, 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 won't, it won't do that. So there's a, there's a real fine language of the, you know, because I think as blowers, there's a funny aesthetic value in glass you particularly like it and we really see it in cast glass where the material has its own instinctive language and you can't necessarily i can't necessarily articulate you know you take an artist like Lubinsky or these big even even hank adams's heads or something there's something there's a language in the density of those materials and their volumes and their weights and relationships and so so, you know, coming to grips with, you know, you know, I, I had to stick with the clear because um, 
you know, even though I wanted to start with the blue, just because I kept or, or you know, I, I just, it, that was one of the toughest ones is like how, what are your base pigments and, and, and how do these, you know, how, you know, how, how, how do these things correlate, you know, with, with the materials, you know, I, I, you know, it's, it's sort of like, um, you know, like you take an artist like June Kaneko and he makes these big ceramic shapes. And I, I call them, I used to call them jelly beans and I didn't like them because you know, he make this big thing, it take a year just, you know, just to make it and dry it. And then he got to fire it for another year. And it's a big kind of like round shape. I'm like, God, June, that's difficult, you know? And then, and then, you know, if you paint it, that, you know, I remember a couple of times he, he was doing something and I got the paint on one of them or something. Didn't look so good. But when I saw the glazed ones, the language of the density of material, speaks on its own and 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 that's probably you know the painting and painting on glass is probably my biggest challenge so, you know often i wish i prefer to fire and on and in the very beginning of, the, of these types of works i think we made some that it was fired on yeah so, we did. And, and and they they were they were kind of i don't know if they were they weren't as successful and although you know you know, I keep, I have some of them and, and, you know, it's amazing how your aesthetics change. You know, you know, I think there's this, this, you know, I think glass being so beautiful, it's a very dangerous material for an artist because, you know, you, you can fall in love with things and, and it, it's not a slight on the work, but, you know, my, my interest is in the act of becoming, you know, more so than than the objects, so I, I I get in trouble sometimes because I, you know I, I think like there was a piece, actually I don't think I'm going to tell you this story. I may get in trouble, you know, but I I remember making an object and and you know I used to not people didn't really early on they didn't care about things that weren't blown and so a lot of my early work I, I actually destroyed a lot of it a lot of it and. Because I didn't have any place to put it, and and then I remember um, a museum calling me and going, "We'd love to buy something," and I couldn't believe it. You know, I'm still alive. The museum wants something. Can you imagine that? And then and then I go, "Well, what is it?" And they they and they tell me about it. I don't know what it is. And they send me images of it, something that I had thrown away. <laughs> and said, oh my God! All of a sudden, something you throw away is worth all this money, and you kind of need it. You know. So I, you know, so I was looking at it and they I said, send me more pictures. So, I, you know, I said, well, I kind of chunked it, but I can use it as a reference. So they turned it into a commission, you know, and that was pretty neat. But um, in answer to your question, I think really it's just about the materials that you use and, and the language that they speak, you know. It's kind of a vague answer, but, uh, you know, this is a, another installation that was just sort of done in the studio. Of, um, and it's just, um, it really wasn't a finished thing, but it just, I was sort of like, I had them all kind of stored and I just started moving them around and, and taking pictures. I have tons and tons of images of, of um, you know, of objects and things that I, that I make. And you can go to another, another image too and you know this is uh this see the yellow the yellow head that was in the uh early slides of uh, emanations this is a a small sh a shot of of an installation that's up i i did it i um actually at the i do a lot of work for the Kaneko foundation and maybe about eight or nine foundations around the country and they asked me to have a show and, I, and and this is the first part of the show. And I said, well, I do the show if I can do another reinvention. So this is what it is now. And then the COVID hit, so we couldn't really do much in the space. So it's been up way too long. I, I can't wait to change it. But th there's the, the head, it's recontexted in another kind of walkthrough environment. You know, you can see the tower is tall. It's it's about 17 feet tall, right. tall, and 
there's the house and and there you can see the the figure i mean the, um the head too next to the figure and these are dancers they were given permission to come in it's kind of a we made a COVID bubble so i you know right now they started off by um they just kind of use this insulation as kind of a a stage set you know and so i you know the the heads are, are friends you know they they they're kind of heavy you know but but so i mean uh, you know stitch it's still still going on another another image i think, I think do you one. remember when we were when we were moving the heads around and kind of figuring out how they were going to function in the space we had to use a wheelbarrow to move them around because they were so big so we just had a head and a wheelbarrow and we were pushing it across the campus to get it over to the museum i do remember that that's how we moved. <laughs> really is how we move. You know, discovery is so important in investigations. I, you know, I, I, you know, even now I don't really, you know, th this insulation is, is changing. We're making, we're going to be making inflatables in there, uh, <laughs> in this space. You can go to the next, the next image, if you please. And, oh, we're back at Wheaton and I remember this kid and, you know, I, the other, the other component, you know, um, you know, that I always thought when I, when I was blowing was, you know, I, I think when we did this session, I, my, my interest in, you know, being a part of, you know, changing the world and oddly enough, quite a few collectors, you know, inspired me in my activism that people that collect the glass, but I remember this kid and you know, and, and, you know, Wheaton, it really, it catered to a lot of kids, a lot of people, a lot of classes. And while we were blowing, I got real intrigued about what, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, you know, you're visiting artists and you're blowing for a certain amount of time. And then you want to get involved with education. And by this time I was kind of tired of being a mandate. I honestly must have hit, I can't, any, I, I can't think of a major city in the United States where I wasn't involved with some kind of educational effort. And, and I, and since around this time, I was thinking about like, how can I, do I even, you know, how can I influence the system or how can I be, you know, what, what is it that I could do with, you know, being a visiting artist that, that you couldn't do. So I, I started interacting with the crowd. I think the first slide with the kid in it. And, and just like, what is it I can, how do you make everyone, you know, I, I, I remember being a, being a, um, in the fourth grade and going to a school and they had this pinata out on the floor of the gym and having to be the kid to go out there and swing at it, you know, and, and how that affected the whole, so that when they leave that room, they, they, they feel part of something, even if they don't know you know, even if they didn't get to do it. So, and, and I, you know, and do respect to what, you know, the outreach at Wheaton, you know, has consistently been a part of it since it's open. And so uh, there was a part of me that was real intrigued by, by that, because I know that if there's something I could try or incubate that you could do later, you know, and I, I was really frustrated because, um, I wanted, wanted to come back and, and be a part of that, of that program development, you know, and, you know, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, I, I'm not the best teacher, but I don't do bad with the kids, you know, and, and just people in general, you know, I, I, you know, I don't necessarily have a, a set plan and I kind of approach it like my work. But, you know, the narcissism of the, being an artist and making objects in your studio, it really kind of brought a balance. And then I wanted to change the world. Things aren't fair in this world sometimes. There's, you know, and you, and, and so somewhere down the line, I, I came to the conclusion of, of education being, a, you know, one of the highest forms of activism. And, and, and just instilling creative thought in education, you know. So currently I, I do, I do more um, programming. I deal with systems. I remember these kids coming and just being, <laughs> what can you do? Like, I wanted to give them the shop. And honestly, <laughs> now, 
you know, now you don't want to get me around them because I'll have them start drawing things and making things, you know. Do you remember when this group came in? We were in the middle of doing something. I think it was like putting a face on. And the picture is not in this slide in this presentation, but you would take a gather out of the furnace and you would just drip it in front of the kids. And they would all look at it like it's a, they're all mesmerized. Like, oh my God, what's going on? But no matter what we were doing, we could be making a piece that's six feet long, super intense. You would stop and you would always engage with the kids. And honestly, that was really good for the, the, the team to see because when the team and you were working together with me, we were kind of figuring out how to make it work, but it kind of like invigorated us to, to work together more. And I, that was really cool for me is to see you engage with the community while we're in the middle of making this work. And that's really what a good part of emanation is about is people understanding how the artist intersects with us and we make the work together and everybody understands. It was just really awesome. This is one of my favorite parts. Thurman, I have a question for you um, that kind of jumps off from this idea of using education as a catalyst for social change. Um, as you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts are um, prevalent not only in the glass community, but throughout the world right now. And I'm wondering if you have ever used this level or style of engagement to foster those efforts, and if you could share some stories about that. I was afforded the opportunity to um, work with the State Department on some cultural exchange outreach in about 16 different countries. And in every workshop, um, I would say very rarely did anything go right. <laughs> you know, like I, had, I was shit, maybe I should have put a few slides in, like I had to do a mural in a park in Mozambique. and. Um, it was on live TV and there were 65 kids and no one spoke English and no one bought any paint, you know? So we ended up dancing and, and then the kids got on my shoulders and I leaned against the wall and we did this human mural, you know, then we covered the wall and some of the kids got three high and it was the most amazing experience. And, and you know, what made all these workshops really valid was that instead of bringing outside materials in, we just worked with, and they, they were, there was a connection. And each one was like, you know, I died and went to heaven, you know, each one. And everything would go wrong. There's no power and you're showing slides and you were able to get to the essence of it all. And it, it sort of, you know, you know, it, it sort of became a, I mean, it, it sort of uh, removed a lot of the outward mechanics that deal with issues of, you know, like what, you know, you know, social change and my, my own role in it, you know, and, you know, and, and I, I found that, you know, it, that those projects ended up forming a, an organization within the state department that, that kind of exists in a very quiet way about art as a diplomatic tool. And, and, um, you know, I, you know, I, um, I remember being in, um, and it, it kind of tooled me up to sort of, you get outside of yourself and you go, what, what, what role do you have? You know, um, probably the most extreme, you know, workshop ever, ever was involved with was in the, in the Savannah, Georgia area, pretty rural area. And the, the white, the white kids, all their parents came because they got wind that a black guy was doing this workshop workshop at the school. And I, the parents and the kids were on one side of the table and the, the black kids or the people of color were on the other side of the table. And it was like, don't even think about it, Thurman. And we made, we made this game of food and everybody wrote down their favorite food and put it in the hat and they had to change seats. They all, and by the time the workshop was over, we were all together. You know, and, you know, I, and I, you know, I think, you know, a lot of these issues, I believe are inside jobs, you know, more so than exterior jobs. There's mechanical ways of dealing with fairness and equity on an institutional level. But I also think, you know, I, I've been witness to, you know, like, like what, what these materials, particularly glass and glass blowing, what these materials do you know, and how they catalyze a different way of thinking. 
you know, and, and, and so, so I tend to, I tend to look for models, you know, I, you know, that, that if they work for one person, just one person, I'm very happy. And if they can be utilized for a group, that's even more happy. And it's kind of like a catalytic point of reference. That's, that's manageable. You know, there's a program. It's not even a program, but it's a, it's a way of thinking that a lot of the uh, First Nations kids have in the Omaha school system that we instill, where, where tradition is very much a part of you and you don't have to know it to be whole. And, and, and so a lot of these kids were ashamed to be who they were. And I said, well, the, you know, I have bad news and good news. The bad news is in 200 years, regardless, you're the ancestors. You know, the bad news is maybe you don't know your traditional, you know, creation story or whatever, but in spite of yourself, you are who you are and you can create new stories that talk about living this day. And, and so, you know, I tend to work from individuals to bigger templates. And, you know, and I think, you know, and it's an honor to even pretend to think that you have that licensing. You know, and it's very, it's true. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone that knows more about, um, you know, displaced people, you know. Um, you know, I'm really, uh, you know, probably the most exciting thing that's happened to me is, you know, here in Omaha, we've got the largest community of South Sudanese. Um, we've got in the, in the world next outside of South Sudan. And, um, you know, we, so we're dealing with what are those issues, you know, even if you were born here from that, you know, what are the things that you inherit? And, and, you know, we've got Karen and, you know, I've worked for Lutheran Family Services, which is the largest sort of relocation service in the world, you know, and dealing with, you know, what, and, you know, I've been afforded the opportunity to, to plan an idea that, that actually influenced ways of advocating. I tend to advocate backwards. In other words, I tend to, you know, if I'm at a hospital and you can, you can go to the next next image too. Um, if I'm at a house, that's, oh, that's us blowing still. Look at those kids, huh? Are they uh -huh. excited? <laughs> that's for this image is my favorite one. You know, there's, <laughs> uh, the piece isn't that big, but look at that kid in the background, boy. Are they, you know, how much fun, you know? You can go to the next one too. And, you know, and that's just more. And, you know, I don't mean to get off subject, but this does, I mean, Wheaton, you know, I was talking to um, um, the director of the of the um, Pilchuck Glass, the artistic director of the Pilchuck Glass School, a guy named Ben. Um, um, oh, Ben Wright. Ben Wright is the artistic director at Pilchuck. I mean, he was just talking about how Wheaton has been such a part of his life, his residencies here, and so I, I can't wait till you get up to running sketch and get the that furnace hot and and the thing about me is I don't even need the furnace anymore. You know? I know you got it all figured out. I'm really looking forward to having you come back because I think it'd be cool to work with you on a project where we have a bunch of kids kind of work on ideas and we work them out together. Like the idea of bringing in outside input in a creative situation is something I find to be the biggest learning and opportunity. And I learned so much when I was with you not just about making glass, but the creative process, because you have such a long time frame with the material. And I feel like when I worked with you, it kind of pushed my limits in a way to, to make work that's more creative, more emotional, but with a, with a bigger purpose. I felt like the work that we made had such a purpose and um, it, it really changed my outlook on, on the way I make work with other people because of you. And I just wanted to thank you for that. You know, I mean, I mean, Wheaton, Wheaton's stewardship with the general public and enriching, you know, and how that moves. It's like this incubation kind of thing that, and it will change, you know, at the same time, it's commitment to the professionalism and, um, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, this commitment to, you know, the field of professionalism 
because they are they are very different things, you know, and just within in a very esoteric way is 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 something, you know, and that it has a commitment to. And in a lot of schools, like I I'm I um, am very involved with the issues of diversity at Hillchurch School, and we're really going to town to sort of look at our role, you know, because we're one of the biggest and, and it's taken school is taking a a different viewpoint, but a very consistent viewpoint in its stewardship and enriching issues of inclusion and not only at the school, but also off the school. And how does it and what is its role? Because you know, as a creative steward, you know, a steward of creativity in the Northwest. And then to take it's going further by you know, not just on campus, but on camp, off campus. Right. And, and it's it's really, you know, it's like rethinking, you know, the systems of how we think and and what we think, even for me, you know, is is a very interesting process. So, you know, Pam, I, I kind of very, you know, investigative. You know, I'm very I'm very much kind of you know, when I, when I, you know, when I go into just helping a human being, you know, um, about it, about it, about it. And, you know, I don't always think, you know, you go, what, what's, what's the best way, you know, how do you, how do you implement change? You know, I, I remember I got picked to make a sculpture in Savannah for the, uh, the Jepson Museum and it was in the paper and, and, uh, and, and, you know, so, and somehow or another it got word was that I was a person of color and and people came to the museum and brought food all the time pies I ate the pie I was so I was being so bad step stitch I had three pies and I had them in my hotel room I didn't want to share them. they were so good you know and, back and, and I gained all this weight and they you know I was taken to all these sites and you know and you know, and, and that the programming we did down there was was fantastic and it was challenging because there are issues of segregation there where, you know, when you go to a room and the kids are segregated, that happened multiple times. And, you know, I, I asked the lady, have you ever seen anyone lynch? You know, anyone that's seen a lynching? And this old lady showed up and they took me to the places and showed me these trees where people were hung and, you know, it was amazing, you know, so... You know, it's a very part of my art now, um, this process. And, you know, and, you know, I think of it almost seamlessly with, with, with the, with the work I, with the work I do and with the studio work. Oh, more kids, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and that is the spirit. This is actually in my studio and these kids were part of a, a, a program where we, I, I actually partnered as an independent and then through ever foundations. And once for one week of the year, they'd bus kids in and they'd have classes all day. Boy, it wore me out, you know, so they'd come to the studio and they'd end up painting on my stuff. And sometimes I'd blast it off and sometimes I'd keep it. I, I you know, and the, all these kids come from a uh, first nations families, um, you know, and has a very unique, you know, being a refugee on your own on your own land is um, is really a challenge. I think you know, and um, and Pam, if there's any questions that come in, let me know, and I'll sure. I'll yeah. So first, Diane says that she worked with you on that Savannah project, so she just wants to give you a little shout out there. And then um, we do have a question um, in regards to the educational programs that you have participated in with children. Uh, someone wants to know, what does that look like now in, in the time of COVID? Um, tricky work to do. You know, we just started working with children in the Sudanese community. Um, you know, some of the, I mean, I, I, I'm actually currently active in about eight different nonprofits around the country to in one or lesser or more degree, you know, and, and, and um, when, when is it safe, you know, and there's a, there's a person in Chicago that works with Glass, Tracy, I forget, I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. And 
she's been pretty insightful in giving me a read, you know, on, on what you can and can't do. You know, being in Omaha, you know, I've, I've got, you know, this, you know, the governor here is pretty open up. Like when, when, you know, but also here down the street from me is the, um, the you know, CDC and oh. some, on our, on our, on our, you know, We've, we've got access to some of the public health officials. So I'm always asking, you know, right now we're working with the, the, the university guidelines and implementing, you know, implementing the social distancing. And, and we pretty much operate like a hospital at, at, at Kaneko. Um, and then a lot of this time has been used, you know, to incubate what we can do when schools open. The schools have opened here. So there's about six different schools I'm involved with. Um, and they're mostly abstract. For example, there's a school that has, uh, it's an elementary school that has ISS and that's the highest in school suspensions in the whole district. So we're actually working kind of together and remotely with the teachers of that school and the administration to redefine discipline and how they, you know, deal, how that is. Because, you know, prior to COVID, when we were investigating it, it was like, it's more fun to be at that school and get in trouble than it is to not. And it involves, you know, the teachers, the cultural aspects. So I, I do work with systems, you know, and right now we just kind of, I could go on and on, but um, we, we partnered with the juvenile justice system here, which is pretty huge. And, um, you know, we've been able to sort of create an ongoing, we're just now developing it and it's really tricky, you know, because what is success? You know, you get into like, what makes an artwork success? Are those hits successful? And what makes, you know, by having multiple ones, you can see, you know, like with the school systems, because they keep statistics, you know, that the First Nations here in Omaha, these kids had the highest, dropout rates, the highest teen pregnancy, all the bad numbers that the First Nations had them. And, and you know, we we were pretty instrumental. The Kaneko Foundation, when they jumped in, it really, really catalyzed them to something bigger. And, you know, we, we the numbers switched. You know, there was a, in the end, there was a 26% shift in, wow. in, in, in just graduation rates. You know, I know more about there's so many and there's so many you know hidden things you know within you know at one point we had the language the omaha language incorporated into the school system and it turned out to be not the best idea because there's aspects of that language that are sacred particularly with women um and and then there's past fears and then you know um there's a history that still exists that is is distance now in the last eight years where, you know, a lot of these kids, parents don't want their kids to go to college because, um, you know, they went, they, they were sent to boarding schools. And I, you know, I don't even want to talk about the abuse that was subjected to yeah. grandmas. So, so I mean, we, we have a question about um, your ability to do workshops if there is no hot shop. Are you, are you able to do workshops without a hot shop being available? Yeah, like this, this was done at a gymnasium mm -hmm. and those, we, we made these in Orlando. It was a collaboration between the Zora Neo Kirsten um, um, uh, Community Center in Orlando and the Orlando Museum where I brought a kind of a wealthy institution together. And I made this thing with like, I, I must've been over a hundred kids. Wow. They gave me a gymnasium. It was tricky because we came up with the theme of a garden and it was tricky because you, you had elementary, then you had high school kids the next day. And there was, and, and, you know, it was kind of, it was, you know, I, I tend to, you know, when I, when I, you know, you go, what, what is it, you know, I mean, most of my curriculums, you know, there is a structure and then there isn't a structure, you know, and that structure is there to act as a guidance for how, how does it move and you know, that, you know, it was a lot of time spent creating an idea that multiple people could work on, you know, like, 
So, you know, the little kids, the, the, the little kids agreed that they would do all the bugs in the garden, right? <laughs> they do all the plants. And then somewhere down the line, we we're like, why don't we make something out of it? So they decided they saw a house. They mentioned, they said, can't we make a house out of it? So when we originally, it was going to be, you know, a kid got a box. And then they, you know, they, you know, you got over 100 kids. Whoa. With about 100 boxes. So it turned into this. So when we started, but it, it I mean, at this point, if it's a piece of paper, I, I'm fine. You know, it's like what? You know, it becomes a creative challenge and you can, you can, so I, you know, I don't, I don't feel obligated at all to have any material. In fact, sometimes, you know, um, so I've, I've been to places where the kids are isolated and we build shelters and slept in them, you know, <laughs> you go out in the woods and the kids had to learn how, when I first went to Pilchuck, you know, I had to build a, a yurt, a shelter. And they said, you can only, they said you can only use natural materials. Wow. Eco education at Pilchuck in the beginning was phenomenal. And it, it was <laughs> just the whole just getting there. And then, you know, and I built this hut in the in the field. And I was so scared a bear was gonna eat me at night or something. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, bear. It was scary, you know. But um, and then the guy, the school, the guy running the school, the eco program, he said, you have to keep all your trash the whole year, you know, and I was like, oh, and it was 11 weeks, you know, 11 weeks of the whole thing. And I was like, OK, and then I looked at the pile and just said, you did pretty good, and, you know. So the answer is, I don't care. This is like parents, actually dads had to work with the families because a lot of this particular group of um, most of these kids, these families were the coach too. And, 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 um, you know, uh, I, I remember getting in a lot of trouble because they had the guys singing with the drum, these guys, and they sang very abstractly and so loud. And I, I said something, I'm always saying really dumb things to be funny. And, um, it was a sacred song and boy, did I get in trouble, but, but, you know, the families, this is the first time these families ever worked together as a whole. It was just a very different kind of experience. And, you know, they brought photos and stuff. This was part of the, the Omaha School District. You know, this is a, um, you know, sketch. I, it, this is one of those um, installations in progress. And, you know, I, I've always been interested in like, you know, doing this, this show was, you know, I, it was at the Museum of Nebraska Art. And, um, you know, I was all excited for the show in November. And they said, well, hey, it's in three weeks. <laughs> so I went out there immediately and looked around and looked at their collection. And, and there, are these, uh, there are these drawings they had there, Stitch. They were um, ledger books. And they, apparently when the Indians on the reservation you draw, they give them the back of ledgers to be creative with. And then they had these Catlin drawings that were done before things had been destroyed by the Western civilization. And, but they didn't have any live living Native Americans in the, in the show. So I got really mad at them. And I made these TP kind of looking things. They're TP, yeah. your eyes, and they were movie theaters. And I showed really racist movies inside of them, you know? Nice so that when people would make wake up and then i i made i collected liquor bottles off of indian reservations and glued them together and made objects but this is just the beginning and then i was shooting arrows i made arrows and shot them at my work and i wanted to incubate they weren't too happy about the arrows but you can go to the next slide also pam because i think that what we do um in the glass you know i my you know my my interest in changes in any venue um, you know, I always wanted to be a doctor, and I think at times art is about, you know, what is the art of healing? And um, I was in Norfolk, and we, what what you see is uh, the the painting on the wall was part of it, but but the suspended work, I, I did those in collaboration with um, with kids that were they they have the cancer, you know. Um, and initially, initially I was a volunteer for about a year there and I would go to Washington DC and go into and sort of help out and do stuff. And, 
and then they, they, I got more involved and I ended up in the cancer ward, which is what I was really interested in. And this, and this particular hospital really was kind of a cultural center. I mean, this children's hospital, King's Daughters, and it's just a really very group of people that go there and love this place. And, and, um, you know, there was one day where the kid, the kid was, um, pretty sick. He's five years old kid, you know, and he, he, um, Stitch, he, uh, he was, uh, you know, he had the chemo treatment. He was kind of dizzy, but he really wanted to draw with me. So he drew this fish. Right. And so I made, I went to the shop and made it out of glass and left it for him, you know, when he, he went home and I got a call and the parents called me up and they said, oh, he want to talk to you. And he said, when are you coming back? And he said, well, I want to go to the hospital. But would you come back with me? So I had to flip all the way, you know, I come back. And then I took him to the shop and he, they messed around with the glass and, and it led to a team of about eight kids that, that used, we used the glass shop on Fridays. I think, um, oh my God, I'm terrible with names, but um, the Norfolk Chrysler Museum let us use their shop. And every Friday, you know, and we, we, you know, we, the kids that I worked with, some of them were very sick. They were supposed to die. So we, and in the therapies with them, I said, well, why don't we make something that you would make you live longer, you know, and, and, you know, and, and so we'd show them the art they had planned for the hospital. And it was like, that isn't going to cut it, you know, and then we show them the really, you know, and then we started drawing. I said, how about we do it ourselves? And I started drawing and, you know, and, you know, some, the, the kid was like, Hey, you know, she, the first, the main, the main kid is supposed to die in a week or two. And I'm like, it come two weeks, I went, you know, what do you mean, you still here? And, and, you know, she eventually went into remission, but we ended up making all the, all the kids design the stuff. And I just, it, it really receives about, there's 87 fish. Wow. And, and it's designed for about 240, I think it is fish. So, you know, it's a project that has kind of got went on hold because, you know, that's another issue I have with the sustainability, you know, right. inclusivity and diversity. It's like, how does that move through a community? You know, there are there, I mean, and in the glass field, there's so many, there's like, uh, you know, crap to the future, glass impact. These are organizations that are dealing with those issues on a broader level. I, you know, I think Pilchuck is doing, you know, we're just now getting going at it, but we're looking at it from our own points of view in terms of our regional support and 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 constructs that 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 run deep that deal with the issue of of objects making and and how it can influence change. You know, but this story was an amazing story because you know currently one of the the lead patient who should have passed. Is now working with me at the, the Pamela Cancer Center, and she's doing a wow. book on a sort of a handbook that they're going to publish on on the cancer. And so, you know, this stuff moves just by instilling creative energy. Because I think everyone here, you know, um, you know, and and just the history of activism, you know, um, even in glass, you know, there's a, a fella named Marty Fine, Joan Bax. These are early glass collectors. And believe it or not, they were some of the primary funders of the civil rights movement. I mean, primary funders. I'm talking about, um, you know, Marty was Marty and this group of East Coast, mostly Judaic based um, collectors were the primary funders and and it was abroad not only just glass collectors but art collectors were the primary funders of the southern christian leadership movement where which was which is, which is i mean and and, and actually uh, the black history museum is going to probably build out a section about about this funding um but you know the march in salem you know um you know joan joan funded you know the three civil rights leaders that were, were, you know, the kids that were murdered, you know, and she funded their funeral and helped. Wow. Them. You know, and people, I mean, I didn't realize this until, you know, 
there was a there was some work I had done that were, were built around this issues. You know, I and just how do you how do we define who we are? You know, um, you know, and I, I think you know. So I, I I tend to 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 think of I look for models that mirror larger populations as points of reference in, in my own diversity and inclusion. I mean, institutional systems, I'm, I'm pretty ruthless about it. I'll go after, you know, if I see, you know, I, I will peck at, at the systems until, until, but, you know, um, you know, it's, 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 I'm very much in the minute and one day at a time, you know, but I, I go, I can be part of one person's life, just one person. And that's enough, you know, and if I go further, you know, that's even and better, you know, and how, you know, and I found, you know, last point, boy, you can turn the toughest kid into an angel. I mean, it's, yeah. awesome. you know, you, which, you know, and it's a lot of times it's just being present and maybe it's that the power of, of clay kind of, you know, helps re restructure things, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know. Thurman, I have one more question as kind of a wrap up question for all of us. And you speak a lot about your involvement with those who perhaps haven't been interested or aren't aware of the creative process. But for those who are and who are inspired by the work you have done and are aspiring themselves to become um, creatives, what words of wisdom or advice would you like to share with them to kind of help them move forward? I think creativity is in everything. You know, there's, there's, you know, you know, if you're a doctor, oh my God, could you imagine cutting a person up and fixing them? And why are there better doctors than not? Maybe it's a skill set. Maybe it's not parallel, you know, glass blowers, you know, and good glass blowers are not. But I think it's about trust and, and, you know, technique idea and, and, you know, I think that people, people tend to read labels too much. They think that they, they, you know, they go to these museums and they see the painting and they don't, they don't trust themselves and their validity and, and just being open about it. You know, it's taking away the, and, and they got to read it to be comfortable about with it. You know, my shows, I don't like this show I have now, there are no titles. I don't want any titles. I don't even want any pictures. I want people to come and just see and trust their immediate experience, which is really the foundation of, of, of glass and craft. It's about what we see and the intellectual knowledge that comes with that, you know, doesn't necessarily, you know, that, that already dictates you from, from that instinctive part. So I think it's, it's, you keep everything. You keep even the ugliest piece, you keep it. Yeah. You know, you keep everything and you cherish it. And, you know, if the journey is fun, as hard as it might be, you keep the ugliest piece you've made. You keep it because it's a point of reference, you know. And, you know, it's not about making someone happy. You know, it's, it's you know, you can't really say it. It's very open-ended. But I think that, you know, the mistakes are just as important as the successes and what and the, and the mistakes become successes. You know, I, I think I do pretty good because I don't think I'm that, I mean, sketch can blow way better than me. I wish I could technically do it, you know, and, and um, I'm medium on my articulation and, you know, I paint, I mean, I, I'm, I, I, I can, I can illustrate pretty good, but not that great, but I have to practice because, you know, in school they had nude models and I, I had a hard time looking at anybody with their clothes off, if you know what I mean. I'd say, I was, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, so I think, you know, I, I really think it's really just about trusting yourself and just flat out going for it, no matter how kooky it might be, you know, and cause, cause I, but I do think create, I think in many ways, all people are, are artists, you know, I mean, there, there's creativity in every decision we make, even running an institution like Wheaton, how do you decide who you advertise to, how, what, you know, it, should you work at the school? Should you work at the community center? Do you work at a certain, you know, there's all these, you know, and, and, and why? So I, I, I think, 
you know, there's a certain level of creative thought about how things fit together. You know, when you get involved with diversity, you know, what, what is the, our inclusion, what are the, what are the best ways to deal with that? You know, how do you, how do you create fairness, you know, with people within a system in a world that maybe isn't fair to women or fair to people of color, you know, do you, you know, you know, I, I, you know, you go, and how do you, you know, and, and what are the, um, you know, what, you know, probably the, if I was going to pick an institution, um, you know, that, that I'm really, really excited about just from its name is the, um, what's the, uh, Philadelphia, uh, um, where they have the auction uh, museum in Philadelphia, the Liberty Museum, the National Liberty Museum, National Liberty Museum. What a name, huh? Holy cow. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you know, I, I do. I mean, I, I tend to try to be invisible um, right? because that way I don't get forced into like, you know, to, you know, what do you call it when you announce things too much, you know, and, you know, I, I, I don't want, I don't like fake news. There's a lot right. of internet about, about solutions and it, and my, you know, and I go, what, what can I do? I would say, you know, so I, those of you that aren't, who's good at it, you know, I think one, you know, that pass it forward system, you know, is very valuable and, and, you know, supporting, you know, like supporting you means I support more, you know? So, so if I can help Wheaton in any way, if it, even if it's um, writing curriculum or, you know, showing my techniques or, and they're not even techniques. It's just, then that's, that's a venue, you know, in terms of how, how can we creatively explore, you know, these issues of inclusion and fairness and justice. You know, I, you know, we, we just design, design here a very culturally specific community oversight committee. And this committee helps the police understand the truth behind a lot of issues. There's no way they could know related to, to the South Sudanese or African nationals here. So there's a very specific committee that's so ingrained in the community that they can actually give them insight on who to, who really is a perpetuator of a crime rather than a generality, you know? And it's, 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 it's terrible. You know, I can tell you, I, I can't tell you the issues that I've run into my life if you really want to hear about it i can tell yeah. that you know i can say that once i was at ucla teaching a class and my car was parked i went out and the lady said that's him and they they, they actually accused me of stealing a car jesus I was the only black guy they could find and i was actually teaching a class you know and you know i was taken to the class you know and so how do you teach that institution that you can't point at the first person and you know i'm sure stuff happens worldwide so um, anyway that's pam those are some of my thoughts i didn't mean to end on a sour note but i you know i think myra weiss was here i i love you myra and there's so many dear people that i i, I care about you know and love that are part of this world and you know they they you know i think um you know, aside from the support of the art that's being made in this material, I mean, they're they're both, you know, Hal and Myra are great doctors, we're great physicians. And that's one of my aspirations. That's how I got involved with hospitals. I just didn't do that well in school, you know. So so, you know, that's that's all I have for you today, I guess. And Stitch, I'm oh, just happy to that's see that's a you. lot. Thurman, <laughs> no. I'm happy to see you and I wanna let you know that I'm really thankful for all the time you spent here working with Wheaton and working with me and you like really changed my life, brother. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks Pam and Marcy. For You're welcome. These things. And it's been a complete pleasure. Um, you have a great spirit Thurman and you um, share that and, and uplift everyone. Um, there are lovely comments. Um, 
in the chat that I will share with you. Uh, you might, you can look at them now, but I will send them to you as well. Um, Pam, do you have a couple more questions? I see two, uh, two there. I don't know if you have uh, Susan, yes, yeah, Susan Margolis said, um, when you can share the tricky methods upending reasons for ISS that the teachers would love to hear about it. And she says, thank you. And then you have such grace. Thank you. I'm looking at the chats. Mm -hmm. Lucky. <laughs> so wonderful. This is such an incredible talk. Thank you so much, Thurman, from the Vera. Oh my God. And Lisa, who you worked with. I, I'm sure you met Lisa at Wheaton Arts. All right, and find out more about Thurman at his website, thermostatum.com. Again, that is in the chat. And you'll find Skitch and Pem's information here and in the chat. And we'd love to hear from you, particularly Pam and Skitch, for uh, about any ideas that you have for new, more programming, new programming. Um, it's always good to hear from the people that are listening this evening. Thurman and Skitch and Pam, thank you so very, very much. It's been a pleasure. And again, Thurman, you made my week. <laughs> I really appreciate everything that you have shared with us. And thank you again. Good night, all. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thanks, Marcy. Thanks, Pam. Thanks, Bye. Skitch.